important. I think for this particular scheme, it is really essentially a concept of risk pooling because without risk pooling, the insurance cannot work. Right? In, in the case of MediShield Life, I think uh, what the government did is that uh, they tried to come up with the, uh, uh, the, the right level of risk pooling so that uh, the, if, after the subsidy, uh, the, the premiums that is uh, uh, forked out by the individuals is affordable as well as providing universal cover for everyone. I okay. think that is a good but of course, there are those on the flip side who say, well, I should not be having to pay for other people's costs. I mean, uh, we had a, a viewer, David Boy, who wrote into the Today paper. He said uh, the cost should fall on those individuals themselves and their families with the government stepping in to provide them with such financial assistance as it considers necessary. So he's saying that some policyholders who might have modest financial resources will end up subsidizing those with pre-existing illnesses who actually may have more financial resources uh, so, what do, you, what do you say to that? Uh, before we, we comment on that, I want to also bring in a caller we have with us, Lester. Lester, uh, you're married, you're 29 years old, and you believe in risk pooling, is that right? Yes, I actually disagree with uh, Mr. Boyd. I feel that risk pooling is the way to go because, I mean, if, for example, like as a family member, um, I mean, he, he was ward in the hospital, the bills came up to over 60,000, but because he has um, at least the basic additional, he, he was included. Um, I mean, even then, with the co-payment, it was $6,000. For a middle-income family, you know, with kids, $6,000 is actually quite a, a significant sum. So without this, um, I mean, he, he would have pay. I mean, the family would have fork out 60000 So uh, there's about 50,000 people who are pre-excluded and who will be included. I believe that, you know, as a country, um, we should all chip in because, after all, universal insurance principle is that the more people that you have, then basically the more you have around to share and to insure. Um, so perhaps what um, I, I think that the way to go would be maybe like in terms of the premium, the upgrade for the MediShield, those people are more well to do. Um, the government could consider taking a part of the uh, okay. money from there to subsidize those who are... Um, not as well off because after right. all, most of right. us 90% we are in the middle or low income families. Okay, Lester, thanks for that. I have to cut you off. Well, I know you'll stay with us online. Uh, Stephen, let me get your reaction to that. Uh, do you, what do you say? Yeah, I actually have a question. We're saying that those with uh, pre existing illness will have to pay 30% more in premium, right? How about babies who are born with uh, illnesses? Do they have to pay 30% more? Janine, okay, I, I think the uh, who those are that have to pay the thirty percent more is still being worked out because uh, currently there are those group who have a uh, uh, illness which are currently excluded. But how severe is the pre-existing illness and uh, how much of it then is the loading? I think those are issues that are still to be worked out. So it depends on like the baby with a uh, congenital disease, uh, how severe it is and what likely are the claims. So I think those are things that. I mean, the ministry okay. will have to work out with the insurance. Okay.